to the book of Joshua, chapter 1. God is good. And all the time. Mm. We're going to speak today to you about possessing our inheritance. Possessing our inheritance. The Lord named it last week. Revealed it to us. And so now we need to be talking about how we go about claiming it and possessing it. The book of Joshua is how the children of Israel possess the land of promise. We pick it up in verse 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass. I just love those words. It came to pass. That's what God's doing all the time. He's bringing it to pass. That the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land, which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, every place you put your foot down, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Then he gives them the boundaries from the wilderness of this Lebanon and even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand against thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, Joshua, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Hallelujah. Be strong. And of a good courage, for unto you this unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto your fathers to give to them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou may prosper. Whithersoever thou goest, wherever you go, you'll prosper. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written in the book. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have I not commanded thee? Be strong, and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed or discouraged. For the Lord thy God is with thee wherever you go. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Now last week the Lord gave us our inheritance. I spoke on our legacy and our vision. This is a year of legacy and vision. And the Lord, ha we've been praying for over a year now. We've been here for about two years and we've been praying earnestly for over a year about what's the next step? Where can we have a place that we can call home? Well, the Lord revealed last week our inheritance. The Lord wants to reclaim, He wants to restore, and He wants to revive the old property downtown for His glory. He wants to restore that to its original historic purpose, its religious and spiritual purpose. Purpose, he wants that to be a lighthouse down there in the middle of Bedell again. Amen? Amen? This is our inheritance. The Lord has confirmed that with his word. He has confirmed it to us by his spirit. We had a prayer here last Sunday at the end, and he is confirming that to us. You will know in your spirit very soon whether or not this is of the Lord or not. You will have peace about this. It may not be exactly what you thought or exactly what you may want, but you'll have peace in your heart and your spirit. This is of the Lord. So the Lord is in the process of confirming that to us. When I pass by, I just say, thank you, Lord. Amen. When I see that steeple, I say, thank you, Lord. This is our inheritance and so the Lord is confirming that to us. The question for many people is, is, well, what now? What's the next step? How do we go about possessing a piece of property that's not even for sale? They don't have this thing up for sale. They've been there for 12 or 13 years, and they're making their way. How in the world do we go about possessing a piece of property 
in the middle of downtown that's not even for sale. Is there some kind of inspiration for that? Is there some kind of pattern? Is there some kind of model in God's Word that will help us and direct us how we are to go about possessing what God has promised us? Joshua chapter 1 is the answer to that. In order to possess what God has promised, in order for us to possess what God has promised, then we have to make sure that we do it the Lord's way. Amen? Amen. And so we're going to look at this word this morning and find out how we go about possessing our inheritance. First, I want you to see what I'm going to call, we must put our foot on it. Say that with me. We must put our foot on it. You'll find that in the first three verses. It says, And it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan. You and all of this people into the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you as I have said unto Moses. Honey, you got to put your foot on it. Amen? Amen. Got to put our foot on it. Now the context is one in which the first generation that came out of Egypt failed to possess the land of promise. God brought them right to the threshold of the land. And they failed to go in and possess what God promised because of unbelief. The giants were bigger than their God. The walls were fortified and too much to overcome. All of their problems and all of their obstacles in their eyes were bigger than their God. That was unfaithfulness, folks. They failed to inherit what God promised because of unbelief. They didn't believe God. So they died off in the wilderness. God judged them and they've died off in the wilderness. Now we got the second generation who's come out who has been in the wilderness for a long time, growing and waiting and growing and waiting. Moses has passed away, and they have mourned this great leader's death. But now God has raised up Joshua to lead the second generation, the Joshua generation, into the land. And you'll notice in verse 2, God says, Arise and go over this Jordan. If you know your book, you know that the Jordan was flooded at this time and it was not crossable. The only way that they could get across it is to trust God to get them across. But God told them to arise, which means action. Go over this Jordan and put your physical foot on the land that I have given you. Amen. So it comes down to this. You say, what does that mean, putting your foot on Putting your foot on it is an act of faith and obedience. In order for them to claim and possess what God had promised them, they had to believe Him and they had to obey Him. It may be hard, but it ain't complicated. Amen? Amen. Amen. So you've got to put your foot on it, which means faith and obedience. So the question at this point is, is what do we need to put our foot on? At this point, this is what we need to put our foot on. We need to put our foot on it in prayer. Somebody say amen. Amen. That's right. We need to put our foot on it in prayer. We need to believe what God has said and we need to put our foot on it in faith and prayer and begin to pray. And we need to pray for favor with the owners and we need to be praying for the process. Amen. Brother John has already gone at my leading, and the Lord's leading, to the people who own the property, the head of the Flagler Playhouse and another main uh, individual who's on the board of directors and let them know that this church has a genuine interest in this property. I haven't signed us up for anything yet on paper, okay? So don't get nervous. But in faith and obedience, I've sent our brother out to let them know that we're interested in that property. And what kind of response do you think he got? 
Honey, he got a favorable response. He's been to the Palm Coast people and talked to them about a possible place for them that they could move over to that would be very favorable to them, Lord willing, and got a positive response. We need to put our foot on it in prayer. We need to be praying for that process. We need to be praying that they'll have an open heart in favor to finding them a place that's more appropriate, allowing us to come back and fulfill the will of God. Amen? Amen. And you know we're praying about that on Wednesday night. That's what we prayed about Wednesday night. This brother had meetings after that and found favor. Three big things this week and got favor in those things. You say, what can we do? We can put our foot on it in prayer. In faith, believe in God. Amen? Amen. Calling those things that are not as though they are. Romans 4, 17. Yes. We need to put our foot on it in prayer. Pray for faith to grow in us and the unity of this body. We don't need a little group sitting here on Wednesday night and most of you out there somewhere. We need you here praying with us. I understand you can't be here every Wednesday night. I understand that. But come when you can. Let's let the Spirit of God create faith in us to believe Him and see this come to pass. We need to pray for the resources to purchase and restore this place so that we... Listen, there's 21,000 square feet down there, by the way. 21,000 square feet. And yes, it needs a lot of work and it needs this, but hey... We need to pray for the resources to be able to do all of this. You have been blessed the last five to seven years in an unbelievable way. That Lottie Moon Christmas offering is the evidence that the Lord has blessed this group. You don't even know how much money we have in savings right now in the building account. You know why? Because you don't come. You'll be shocked to know how much is in there. It's not enough to buy this property, but it is an amazing amount. I ain't going to tell you unless you come. <laughs> <laughs> we the bank. We are the bank. Do not ask me to go to the Gentiles and borrow money for God's purpose. I will not do it. Amen. God will provide. Where he sends us. Amen? Amen. He always has and he always will. Amen. We're going to trust him and his people for this. Amen. Amen. We need to pray for God to be glorified through us. Yes. Do you know what it's going to mean down here in this community when this comes to, ha to pass? Do you know what it's going to mean for many of those people down there who saw that church go away? Do you know what it's going to mean to many in that area? Do you know what it's going to mean to us? Do you know what it's going to mean to God for God to be glorified in that place again? Hallelujah. Romans 4.20 Abraham staggered not at the promise of God in unbelief, but was strong in faith, bringing glory to God. We are here to bring Him glory. Amen? Amen. Amen. We've got to be strong in faith, believing God for this. This is God's heart. This is God's purpose. If this was my deal, I'd be doing it somewhere else. I'd be doing it somewhere where it's a whole lot easier and a whole lot nicer, a whole lot newer. But this is not me. This is the heart of God for Benel in this area. Do you know how many of you have a history down there? You're connected to that place. Honey, many of you just making a full circle. You've just been going around in a circle and you're going to come back to that same place. And then we're going to pass it on. We're going to pass it on. Amen? For us older folks, this is our legacy. For you younger folks, this is your vision. God's speaking to you. Amen? All we got to do, we got to put our foot on it. And that means putting our foot on it in faith and obedience. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Can I have an amen? Amen. amen? amen. Some of you are acting like this is going to cost you something. It is. <laughs> it is. Number two, we must keep putting our foot on it. Say that with me. We must keep putting our foot on it. 
Verse 4. From the wilderness of this Lebanon, even in, unto the great river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There's the boundaries of it. There shall not be any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, Joshua, I'm going to be with you, and I will not fail you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shall thou divide an inheritance in the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper wherever you go. Man, is that awesome or what? Now in verse 7, the word of the Lord to Joshua was very clear. He was to be strong and very courageous that they may observe to do all the law. They might be obedient to the revealed word of God. And as he tells them, Moses, my servant, commanded you, turn not from the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper. So why did he tell them that? Why did he tell them not to turn from the right hand or to the left? Why did he tell them to stay in the word? Why did he tell them to be obedient? Why? What does your text say? So that they'll do what? Honey, this ain't going to happen if we won't obey God. That's right. You want to prosper? You yes, want sir. to possess it? Yes, sir. Then you and I must be obedient to the revealed word of God and to His will. Amen. We want to be blessed. We want to go forth. Then we have to be obedient to what He says. And then what is He saying? Bottom of verse seven: that you may prosper wherever you go. Where where well, where were they going? Verse 4, they were going to possess all of the boundary of that land that God gave them. That's what they were going to do. Listen, when they crossed that flooded Jordan, after they got on the other side of that Jordan, they claimed all of that land that God had given them in verse 4. But honey, they had to do it one step at a time. That's right. They didn't get to possess any land until they put their foot on it. But when they put their foot on it, God gave it to them. <clears throat> it was a process. When you keep putting your foot on it, that is an act of perseverance and discipline. They had to keep exercising faith in God. It wasn't a one-time deal. This is just a, 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 a one, one-time thing. They crossed over the river and then that was it. Well, guess what came after crossing the river? You remember? The fortified Jericho. And after that it was Ai. And after that it was another place. And after that it was another place. But God would not give them that land in its entirety until they kept putting their foot on it. They had to put their foot on it. You don't get to possess it unless you put your foot on it. And keep putting your foot on it. Amen? It's an act of perseverance. It's faith multiplied. It's growing in obedience. You keep obeying God and keep obeying God and you persevere until you become disciplined. You know His voice and you follow His uh, direction and you obey Him. Flooded Jordan first, then fortified Jericho, and then Ai, and they had a little mess up there, but they got that straightened out and then they went on. And then it was to remove all the people from the land and they begin to deal with that. And finally, during the kingdom of David and Solomon, they begin to reach the outskirts of all of this. It took time. They had to persevere and be disciplined. Amen? Amen. Ah! Hate that word, don't you? Discipline. That means it's going to cost you something in your flesh. That's what that means. You'll have to bring yourself into discipline. In subjection to the Lord and keep going forth and keep going forth. Amen. So you got to keep putting your foot on it. It's not just about crossing the river. Then you head down to the fortified Jericho and then up into the land. And this went on for a good while. So, in order to possess what God has promised, you got to put your foot on it, faith and obedience. Then you got to keep putting your foot on it. 
This is an act of perseverance and discipline. Amen? Amen. This is how it's done. Now, folks, I said earlier on, this is not our first church rodeo. We've been here before. What you're looking at is the skeleton of a 9,000 square foot sanctuary and office space that we built just down the road here. That God used us to build and raise up and pay for it debt free to the glory of God. It's the only church in this area of any size that I know of has ever been built debt free. <clears throat> We're not building this thing the way the Gentiles did. We're building this way thing the way the Lord says to build it. Amen. 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 Hey, we've been here before. This is not something new to many of us. God has used us before. And He can do it again. Amen? Amen. He can do it again. But understand, as you persevere and as you are disciplined... There's going to be some pain involved. Do you know how long it took us to do that? With all the problems and the difficulties and the struggles? Two years and two months. From brown grape, brown grape, brown, brown grape. Thank you. <laughs> Groundbreaking to getting in the building. Dedication. Two years and two months. All in problems. Uh, you've got to persevere. You know how many times we could have quit on that deal? There's going to be all kinds of opportunities to quit. That's right. All, the enemy's going to give us all kinds of opportunities to quit and just give up. So we had a hard time getting started. I don't know if you remember this or not. Do you remember what happened the first Sunday that we had set apart the big Sunday to to kick off our fundraising from Exodus 25 of how we were going to get the resources to do this. you remember what happened? Does anybody remember? Honey, I remember. My house burned down. That's what happened. Wow. The Sunday that we were going to kick this thing off, and the house burned down. And so did Jim Jones and 18 other people with us. Just like that. And I can remember sitting on the bed over at the beach in some other place because we couldn't be there, you know, then. <laughs> and uh, we saw our house on TV. Our house. And they had put the fire out. That's right, they put the fire out. So look, Don, our house not burned too bad. Ten minutes till ten on Sunday morning. Ten minutes till eleven on Sunday morning. The church phone rang and said, it's an emergency for Pastor Benoit. Somebody got on that phone and said, Pastor, I'm sorry to inform you, but your house caught back on fire and burned down. <laughs> Just like that. Just like that. Now, it did slow us up a little bit, but it didn't stop us. There will be sacrifice involved in this. There will be distractions involved in this. There will be some struggle involved in this. But we can't let anything keep us from doing what God's called us to do. Amen? Amen. You say, I can't believe something like that would happen. Well, let me tell you. God doesn't allow things like this to happen in our life to destroy us. He allows these things to happen to develop our faith. Now, the enemy, the enemy will tempt you to destroy you, but the Lord allows testing to develop your faith. Now, I wouldn't want to go through it again. I hope my house don't burn up again. But I have to say that I learned much through that experience. And you know what that sign is on that tree right there that you can see? It says that Jesus is still Lord. John 8, 32. If you know the truth, the truth will set you free. It's just a house. It's just a house. Amen. But you've got to persevere. And when you persevere through your trials and your struggles and your suffering and your sacrifices... You come out like gold, so to speak. You see the Jesus shine on you. That's right. You bring Him glory and honor. So we got to put our foot on it. You got that part? Number two, you got to keep putting your foot on it. Amen? You say, what's next? I'm glad you asked. We must live with our foot on it. Say that with me. We must live with our foot on it. In verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then 
thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have I not commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with you wherever you go. My goodness. You'll notice in the first part of verse 8, what does he tell them to do? Keep speaking the word. That's right. Keep speaking the word. Make sure you don't let the word get out of your, you know, your, your, your thinking and your speaking. Make sure you continue to speak the word forth. Don't turn to the right, don't turn to the left, but keep speaking that word. Keep speaking truth. Keep faith and truth in your head and in your heart. Let it come out your mouth so the ears of your faith can hear that so you can grow. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Do you know why so many of us act like Gentiles, act like people of the world? We watch too much of their junk. The leader was told, whatever you do, make sure you don't quit speaking the truth and quit speaking the Word of God. Continue to speak it. Be positive. The Word of God is positive. Speak the Word. Keep it on your tongue. Keep it on your mind. Keep speaking the truth in the Word and let it build faith in you. And don't turn from the right or to the left. And if you do that, you're going to prosper. Amen. You're going to be blessed. You're going to be able to accomplish what I've called you to accomplish, and you're going to be able to live with your foot on it. Now, the last point is not stated directly in the text, but it's certainly implied. How is it implied? Well, let me ask you this. When they put their foot on it in faith and obedience, and they kept putting their foot on it in faith and obedience, and discipline and perseverance, what did they do with the land that God gave them? They lived on it. You see, they didn't get to live on it and enjoy it until they put their foot on it in faith and believed God for it. And when they put their foot on it, then they possessed it. It's just out there. But when they believed God and obeyed Him and marched out there and fought for it and put their foot on it, <coughs> then they possessed it. And when they possessed it, they got to live on it. They got to receive cities and houses that they did not build. Amen. They got to enjoy fruit from vineyards and orchards that they did not plant. They got to enjoy water from wells that they did not dig. They got to enjoy meat and products from uh, cattle and uh, that kind of thing that they did not raise up. They got to enjoy food from farmland that they didn't clear and that they didn't cultivate. They got to enjoy the fullness of the land only when they possessed it and lived on it. Amen. 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 We must live with our foot on it. And when we possess it, then we'll get to enjoy that 21,000 square feet that's right down the road from us. Amen. 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 God's going to place us on the crossroads of this county to minister. See, say, how are we going to do this? We're going to put our foot on it. We're going to keep putting our foot on it until we live with our foot on it. Amen? Amen. 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 That's awesome. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. may be hard, but it ain't complicated. <laughs> Got to step up. Amen? Amen? Got to step up. So... <clears throat> Living with your foot on it is an act of possession and fulfillment. Now, all of these points apply to us as believers in what Christ has given us in the spiritual realm. And I preach messages about how you possess what's promised to us in Christ numerous times, the fullness of Christ in our life. It's the same process. This time for us as a church, it just happens to be a property that he has given us. We did this before, and we went through this before. Remember walking around the walls of Jericho? Where were we when we did that? We were inside that brand new building. See, we weren't doing that to get the building. We were doing that so that we could possess the fullness of Christ in our life. 
But this go around, it's a property. And the Lord may call us to go down there and march around it. And blow the horn. And if he does, we'll do it. Amen. That's right. But we must live with our foot on it. Now, here it is. There's our inheritance. Our legacy and vision. Thank you. Mm, amazing. There's a story in the Bible about a little Jewish girl called Esther. During the exile, the Lord's people were under the Babylonians and then other people and wound up under the Persians, I believe it was. And Esther became queen alongside her king, Harris. And she was queen of the kingdom. Little Jewish girl over there in exile. She found herself in a prominent position. But as life would have it, there was an evil man by the name of Haman. Wicked. He got mad at Mordecai, who was a Jewish guy. He actually, Mordecai, raised uh, Esther. He was an older cousin. And Haman devised a plan to annihilate the Jews, to kill them all. <clears throat> On a certain, certain date, the king said, and signed a decree that on this day we can kill all the Jews throughout the kingdom, take their properties. Haman devised this wicked plan against God's people there in exile. Well, that didn't sit too well with Mordecai. He put on sackcloth and ashes and began to pray and, you know, cry out to the Lord. And when Esther found out, she didn't even know what was going on. But Mordecai sent word to her and sent her to decree what was going to happen. And this is what he said to her. He said, you're going to have to go to the king and plead for our lives. <clears throat> See, her nationality wasn't, you know, a, a, a known thing. And she said, oh, I can't go. You can't go into the presence of the king. If he don't call you, you can't go. Because if you go and you're not called, he could kill you. I can't go. Mordecai says, you've got to go. You've got to go and try to save us. She said, I can't go. And then Mordecai told her, said, listen, if you don't go, God raised somebody else up to go. But then he says this right here to her. For who knows whether or not you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. For who knows if God has not exalted you and placed you in this prominent place so that you can save your people. From annihilation. Who knows if God has not elevated you. Put you in this place. And in this position. So that you can save us. She prayed for three days. And fasted for three days. And other people did too. And then she went to the king. And she got it worked out. And she saved her people. And old Haman and his crowd was annihilated. Amen. The spirit of God is speaking to you and me this morning. Who knows whether or not we are here for such a time as this. All of you folks who have roots down here. All of you folks who care about this area. Brought us back from North Carolina and pulled us together. He has blessed you in the last five to seven years. It's been an incredible journey for you financially. We have all of this standing. We have all of this stuff. And he has brought... Has God not brought us together for such a time as this? Amen. If not us, then who? Who can you think of that would be better suited and better blessed with what you have and what you've been blessed with and what we have been given? Who can you think of who would be better to do this than us? You hear them kids back there? They need a little school down there so that we can minister to them. <laughs> Amen. 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 So here we are. Are we here for such a time as this? You know in your spirit if this is of God or not. Amen. You know that. May not be as fun as We'd hope. I was hoping for something easier to tell you the truth. <laughs> but 
But I believe I'm here for such a time as this. And I believe that you are here for such a time as this. Honey, we got property, we got resources, we got blessing, we got what we need to do this. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's bow before the Lord. I'm going to ask the worship team.